very excited for my guest today. You, you guys know her. She's been on the show before. She is the um, she is one third of the Convo Couch because they are a power trio, um, and she has been doing amazing work on the ground. They've been covering protest after protest after protest, and they were in. They're still in South Florida because they were covering what went on there yesterday um, in regards to Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Jen Perlman. So we're going to talk about this. Please welcome back to the show, Fiorella Isabel from the Convo Couch. What's up, Fiorella? Hey, Ron. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. There's a lot to be said. <laughs> so I know. In, in I know. These days, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of, I told everybody yesterday that you were coming on the show and I said, we might be celebrating. We might not be. But it's going to be a show and we're going to have a lot to say one way or another. And uh, we're not celebrating, but we're having a show. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, let's just jump right into it. So, so okay. you guys, how long have you been in South Florida now? All right. So we got here. Um, uh, when did we, get here? we got here Monday um, and we have been um, kind of we were we were following the Jen Perlman race. And against Debbie Watson Schultz, it's Broward County, but the way they cut the district, unfortunately for her, it's also parts of Dade County. So there's two different counties, two different voting machine systems. Um, and it, it, it's kind of like expected because Debbie has this tradition now that we're all so happy about where she rigs races. Uh, so it was kind of expected that she was going to pull some things. But what we saw was just another um reiteration of how corrupt this party is and how like because they're never held accountable they get away with it especially in a state like florida where you don't have the third party presence you really don't have an independent presence and a lot of people you know like tim canova ran before in 2016 and in 2018 and he then became an independent because he realized how corrupt it was however the other side of the coin is it's really difficult to win on an outside ticket in, in, in Florida. I mean, this isn't Miami that mostly, this is like Fort Lauderdale, uh, like parts of the, the part of Florida that is not necessarily as heavily minority oriented. And um, we were kind of expecting Debbie to do something, but what we saw yesterday was just really awful. So um, in particular, when we were, going interviewing the volunteers, interviewing Jen. We eventually got to this polling location that was at a residential area. So there, it was like a, you had to go through a gate to go vote, which first of all, I don't know how that's possible and I don't know how that makes sense, but you had to go through a security gate to go vote to your polling center. Um, and when we went through the first time, we had all our, our media credentials and stuff and they said, no, absolutely no media. We're being told that there's no media allowed in here. And we were, we were, we fought back. We're like, no, we're media. Here's this, here's that. There's a statue, blah, blah, blah. They were like, we don't care about the statue. I'm being told by somebody on the phone that you can't go in. So we, we have around. nothing to hide. No, pay no, nothing to hide. pay no attention to the man behind <laughs> the curtain going, doing God knows what with the ballots. And so Johnny insisted like, no, let's find another way in. Right. So we go around and try to find another way in this location. And we had been visiting locations throughout the day, like I said, but this one in particular, we were kind of like, hmm, I wonder why they're not allowed allowing media in. And so we went the other way, we got in, but we took off our press badges because we wanted to pretend we were like voters. We're like, oh, we're going to vote. And they're like, okay, go right in. So that's how we got in. So we didn't have our press badges and we pull up to the area where all the volunteers are for the various candidates that are there. And of course, none other than Debbie Wasserman Schultz walks right up to the car. And I, you guys talked about it yesterday. Yeah, right? we did a video on it. I got a <laughs> yeah. kick out of it. I mean, I mean, pasta sounded like he was just like, Oh, how are you? Good morning. <laughs> She's like Tom Perez. Like you can never get a hold of her. You don't, you don't ever know where she is. So what we saw here, we were like, what the hell? And if you just saw her and you didn't know who she was, you think she was the nicest little lady 
like that wouldn't hurt a fly and she's like hi and pasta's like why are you here and yeah. i'm like come on pasta like he, he kind of like froze and uh i was just laughing in the background well were you guys in uh well, but i couldn't hear you laugh but were you guys in <laughs> like because i mean i saw some other pictures and you guys had like jen perlman shirts on and stuff did you have that on at the time in the car like like were you guys in jen oh. gear or no 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 i never had a you did jen not perlman shirt on. no 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 johnny did who. though didn't he i don't think so I thought I he did. So. All right, maybe, maybe I'm thinking I might be confused <laughs> with something else. I was just maybe. curious if you guys like had Jen stuff on when no, you saw her or no. not. Okay. No, okay. we were in a Prius. Maybe that's why she came in. <laughs> like, but that's it. That's all we had. We just had a Prius. Uh, and um, have yeah, you paid really that weird. Prius off? Do you need a payday <laughs> loan? I can help you. She was just. It was just so surreal because she's usually running away from press, so she didn't know we were press. And like, I, I wanted to say like. You're the reason we have Trump so bad. Like, <laughs> like I hate you. You, like, you know. Um, and uh, anyway, so we realized that the reason they didn't let media in was because she was at that location. So that was the first thing that, that happened because they absolutely had cops there. They weren't allowing media in. They were protecting her. And then she went into a black car and, like, was whisked away somewhere. But it was really interesting. And um, the volunteers told us that she went there because she was getting scared because there were so much, so, so many young volunteers for Jen Perlman. And as you know, she physically attacked yes. one of her volunteers. And I yes. interviewed that volunteer. It's a 16 year old girl, number one. Yes, um, which, you know what? The other side <laughs> of that is that's awesome. <laughs> that 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 sixteen year old is doing that. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. That sixteen year old is out there volunteering. She's a climate activist. She's awesome. I mean, that's yep. freaking awesome. And um, yeah. What what are your thoughts on? Because I've talked about this because of that. Because I we we did that story on Monday on this show. Mm -hmm. Do you think sixteen year olds should be able to vote? I do. I you know. I do like too. What, you like you can enlist in the army. Right. You can take a shot, but you, you 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 can't take a shot, but you can take a bullet is that kind of mentality. It's like we're sending these yeah. kids out ready to, to fight, but they can't they can't vote and they can't, you know, like it, well, it's I think ridiculous. 18, 18 is army, isn't it? It's 18, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like but you, you can the, they can send you to war, but you can't order a drink. Right. And you can't vote until you're 18. So it's like you don't get a say in the people who are going to send you to war on your 18th birthday. Right. And, That's the freaking um, issue. And if, if you can yeah. drive a car, you can cast a ballot. Yeah. And I think, and I think 16 year olds are different than maybe 16 year olds before, you know, sure. I don't know if you agree with that, but like, they know a lot more. Like I, like my sister's 17 and she's been protesting now. She's getting more aware of things at an earlier age than maybe our generation did um, because kind of the, they have to. They're, they're, yeah. Like they don't have a choice. I mean, they're seeing climate impending climate doom, and they're seeing w the failure of the government. And they've witnessed most of them have been alive to see two of the largest transfers of wealth from from the uh, poor to the elites. And so they're like obviously not going to ignore that. I mean, there's a point where they're going to be like, wait a minute, why is this happening right now? Right. And yeah. it, it's nice to see that, that in Jen's race, like I, I saw so many young people. So that was a positive. They're totally engaged because as you, yeah, they have to be, cause they're like, we want a planet. Yeah. We want a <laughs> planet to grow old on. So we are paying attention and we're engaged. And, and yeah, I mean, I think the zoomers really give me hope. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of millennials doing great things. I mean, I mean, every generation has people doing great right, things. I mean, right, you right. know, the, the boomers have people who have been peace activists their entire freaking lives who are still showing up and refuse to give up, you know? So yeah. every generation has, you know, great people and not so great people. That's how the world works. But, you know, the zoomers in particular, like, like I kind of, as a millennial, I kind of feel like, you know what? I look at our bench and I see people like Joe Kennedy and Pete Buttigieg and I'm, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe we should just hand off our time to the Zoomers. Be like, you know what? We're going to hand you our time. We'll do other things. We'll, we'll be activists. We'll be artists. We'll be journalists. We'll do other things. And you guys can just take our spot and, and just keep ruling a little while longer because you all got figure it figured out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and I just, uh, and 
I just see that that the future is with with them, obviously. You know. Yeah, totally. Um, but um, after that, after that whole situation happened with with that, uh, we were following the the counting of the ballots, et cetera, and we were told we could go and witness them. In fact, according to a statute that uh, literally outlines at the end of the 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 like once the polling locations close the public not just press but the public can go and witness the counting of the ballots so we went to a location because we got word that they ran out of ballots so people were in line waiting for ballots and obviously they're in line and it's getting closer to seven o'clock and then guess what happened the they the the polls closed and the people were still waiting in line because they ran out of ballots. So and they where didn't open them back up? Where all did this happen? Like where did they run out of ballots? So this location was um oh god the name escapes me. It was I think uh it's called Dane. I can't remember. I can't remember the the specific name. But we were there yesterday for like three hours. Um, and it was, it's near, if you, if you're not familiar with Florida, it's in South Florida, but it's not, it's not Miami. It's a little bit North of that. So closer to the, the Fort Lauderdale area, um, okay. the beach area, it was a very, very, uh, poor minority working class area. Of course. That, that was, that <laughs> was what motivated my question. I, I mean, yeah. you know, whenever you see this happen, be it in Florida or, or I mean, Kentucky, we can talk about what happened recently in Kentucky. You know, right. it's never in the Oops. white neighborhoods. It's never in the wealthy neighborhoods. It's always in the city centers where it tends to lean more progressive. It's always in minority neighborhoods. It's always, I mean, that's always where this stuff happens. Right. So they always happen to run out of ballots where there was, a, and I, by minorities, I mean uh, heavily, I saw a lot of, of black people and I also saw Latino people. So I, in you know, like impoverished areas where you see a lot of trailers, uh, that kind of area. And of course they ran out of the ballots. Okay. So instead of extending it, they didn't extend it. Um, they cut it off right at seven. And Jen Perlman tweet had tweeted, hey, like, if you're in line, stay in line, you know, the usual. And then uh, once the polls closed, though, we were like, OK, we're going to be here to, like, witness the counting of the ballots. And um, Johnny and Pasta in particular went inside. And that's when um, they told them, oh, we're going to give you a tour. So th they were waiting. Wait, wait, for wait. A tour. Who told them? Who said we're going to give you a tour? The poll worker. OK, OK. One of the poll workers. So there was two. There was a, a woman and a man. The man was black. The woman, I believe, was um, Hispanic. And they, they were like, oh, yeah. She said, oh, we're going to give you a tour. And then the gentleman got on the phone, made a call, and said something. And then right after he said something, he was like, nope, sorry. We're, we're not going to. You guys can't be here. And so that's when they were like, hey, there's a statue. Here it is. It says, by law, the public is allowed to observe the counting of the ballots. And then they said, um, no, sorry, I, I'm just being told you can't be here. And so it was the same thing that happened earlier where they the, the, the woman that was didn't want to let us in was on a phone call. And they were like, no, you can't let them in. The same kind of like weird behavior. And it, they tried to stay in. It's not like they gave up. They tried to stay in. But the, the guy was like shoving them out. I mean, literally Jeez. shoving them out. And they're like, hey, Even they closed the, the door the on statute, us. They're like, there's a statute. We're allowed to be here. It's the law. He said they he still... didn't get care about the statute. I mean, we, wow. we posted the video on Twitter. Um, but if, if you guys can check it out. I think it's, it should be on my on my feed. I just retweeted it, actually. Um, and, you know, it, they got really aggressive. And it's it's like, well, if you have nothing to hide, what, what's what's with people observing it, right? And so we stayed behind and we saw them transport the ballots into a truck and the ballot machines. And we were kind of following them a little bit to see what, what they were doing, if they were following the two person per car protocol, because that, that has to be a protocol. And it's one that Debbie has broken many times when um, she's been reportedly involved in that. Uh, in, in the last few times, as you guys, have, I'm sure, have seen what Tim Canova said about that in 2016, 2018. So, so real quick, is this the video? Yes, this is the okay. video. Okay, all right, so let's check it out. Uh, here we go. You gotta leave. Why? You gotta leave. He said that's not true. 
What's that? You got me. You want me to show you the... the... No, you can't show me nothing. I just heard the direction. Yeah, put y'all inside. Come on, let's go. Come on. Uh, let's go. Come on. All right, well, let's go. Start walking. Let's go. Let's go. Start walking. We're walking. Let's go. 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 Let's
So what else did you guys find? So like I said, so the, the data that they saw on the tapes was showing that there were way more votes for the, these lower races, even though hers was the, the top ballot race. They were first on, on the ballot. When you open the ballot, you saw th their race and also Jen Perlman's name was first. Um, it doesn't make sense that people would vote more for the judges than they would for, for a congressional race. That just doesn't happen statistically. Um, and that yeah, usually means that there is some sort of fraud or inconsistency because there should be way more. Like we're talking two to three times people, the amount of people voting for judges than voting for the congressional race. And so that that is that is really suspect. And so we followed, like I said, we followed this truck to see what they were transporting. And it was weird. The ballots were being transported in a um, moving truck, like a budget, a budget mo moving rental truck. And we were just making sure that that they were doing the process correctly. We followed them to another location and they kept stopping um, and had other vehicles come in. It, it just felt like it was entirely inconsistent. And they've and, done that before. Yeah, that absolutely. was that was also happening. And in fact, like like real quick here, let's give people a bit of a crash course on the county we are talking about. And let, let's start almost at the beginning or at least as far back. I mean, 2000, this was one of the counties most heavily involved in purging the rolls. Yes. That ended up leading to them determine that George W. Bush was going to be the next uh, the next president. And by them, I mean the courts. So this was a notorious county in 2000 during a presidential. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you look at what happened with Debbie Wasserman Schultz uh, the first time against Tim Canova, where there was a lot of discrepancies uh, with the ballots. There was a lot of discrepancies as to what happened there the first time. Ballots being destroyed, ballots not being kept properly. A lot of unanswered questions there in 2016. Then you look at 2018 when Tim ran as an independent and the results that happened there. Now, I get it. It's very tough to run right. as an independent in that district. I do get that. But the results that Tim got, and keep in mind, at this point, he had all this name recognition. Where And then he ends up getting the exact same number in every demographic, which I believe a statistician said, that is about as likely as getting struck by lightning twice. Wasn't yeah. that the analogy they made? Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like th this is a very, very notorious county that has had issue after issue for 20 years. Right. And, and it's clear that Debbie had told, like, the the people guarding the the polls to not let the media in again mm -hmm. they're trying to keep the media out at every turn like it doesn't matter that we have the right to be there that you have the right to be there if you're just a, a citizen of a public but the fact that they 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 said that they have nothing to hide that this is all fair and square yet the results are inconsistent with uh something that would be statistically um accurate like that just doesn't happen that just does not happen. And so um, we're going to continue investigating this today um, and following the election integrity issue because, you know, she didn't contest it. Um, Jen didn't contest it. And they, you know, if you don't contest it, then that's it. You know what I mean? But like, it, it's the fact that these things keep happening and that Debbie um, doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't have to campaign. She doesn't have to debate her opponent. She doesn't even have to recognize her opponent. I asked Jen Proleman if uh, she had, was even addressed by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and she wasn't. She's never been addressed. She's pretended she doesn't exist. Uh, at the last minute, she shows up with her with her with her people to intimidate protesters and to convince the young ones to vote for her. And what I or, saw or to shove or to shove one of them or to shove exactly or to shove one of them. Um, and by the way, I don't, I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard, but there is a, a report that was filed of assault yes. against Debbie Wasserman Schultz, which is important to have a, a, as a receipt in general, because she, that woman needs to be held accountable for, for something. I mean, at the very least, striking a minor, uh, a 16 year old should, should be, uh, you know, she should be held accountable to that if she's not held accountable for everything else that she's done. So let's uh, talk about that for, for a minute, because I know you got to interview, um, you got, what was the um what was the activist's name the the girl that got um, shoved martina 
Yes. And so you actually got to talk to her directly. I've, I've just seen the TikTok video that she put yeah. out. Um, cause I'm, I'm with it. I understand the TikTok. <laughs> You're not a boomer. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's right. Um, so what happened? Like, like, like what, what kind of in detail did she have to say? Like, like how did that kind of come to fruition that whole, uh, event? Yeah, so she was volunteering, obviously, for Jen Parliament, and she was with another volunteer who was the one, he was a, a, he was a, a gentleman, he was a, a boy, a young man, and he was the one that was kind of like riling up the, the Debbie Wasserman Schultz people saying, you guys need to vote for Jen Perlman and blah, blah, blah. And Debbie Wasserman Schultz, of course, comes in and, 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 and uh, tries to push them out, tries to get the, the, the volunteers for Jen out of the way and um in the process she she physically shoves martina and um like you know like attacks her and and she didn't think much of it right away um she wasn't sure how to react and then she told jen and jen was like yeah that's not okay she can't do that she can't be touching harassing volunteers and it, it, it's ridiculous i mean she went after and this this young woman is um L um, LGBTQ, a woman of color. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't like, uh, I'm not leading with the identity politics here, but for somebody who espouses to be pro uh, women of color, uh, for somebody from a party that really loves to throw all these identity politics issues first, to really go after and attack a young woman that was there, uh, 16 years old, fighting for what she believes in, fighting for a candidate, it's really hypocritical of people like Debbie Wasserman Schultz who literally use that to attack people who have used it to attack people like Bernie Sanders and progressives. And, you know, she's like this sort of politician that, that turns people away from the Democratic Party. And here's the youth that we're trying to gain. And, you know, she just literally physically assaults her. Um, well, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, just think about being a politician where it's like your job to I mean, a, a big part of your job is acting properly in public yeah. and to shove a 16 year old, a young girl and just not even like, that's just natural. You just shove, shove them and not think I'm going to face any consequence for this. And right. then by the way, go on to win your <laughs> next election win in quotes. Cause who knows, you know what actually happened yet, yeah. but you know, that's unreal. And that, that just goes to show how insanely broken our system is. You know, I, I mean, did they rig it this time around? I guess we can't say for sure one way or another quite yet, but I can tell you this much. Debbie Wasserman Schultz behaves like someone who doesn't give a hoot what happens in the ballot box, which leads me to think, I guess maybe, maybe, maybe the fix is in. Yeah. You shove a kid? You got to be kidding me. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make. 